Hi, welcome to our lesson for today. We are looking at systems technology and we are focusing on software. We did discuss uh, basic concepts regarding software. We spoke about the two different types of software, which is your system software as well as your application software. So now we're going to look at more depth into your operating system or your system software and be able to discuss it in more details. Now, your operating system. Operating system, same as your system software. Do not be confused. Now, your operating system, remember we said it controls, which is the most important thing. It would control and it, it would coordinate operations of a computer and the devices. Now, what else does it do? It can serve as an interface between a user application software as well as hardware. Now, how do we explain this? Now, your system software would obviously allow you to log in onto your computer, will give you the interface onto your computer, and will allow you to use your hardware on your computer. Now, what the system software does is it recognizes hardware that is attached and allow you to use it. So that is why we say it acts as an interface between application software as well as hardware. Right. Then a few examples that we've already mentioned before, your Linux, Windows XP, Windows 8, another one, Mac operating system, which are some of the operating systems that we can use. There's more, obviously, but uh, we're just mentioning a few. The next part that we have to focus on is administering security. Now, we did mention before that your operating system allows you to log in. Now, logging in obviously provides security to your system. You don't want someone just coming in front of your computer, sitting and using it, and actually getting access to your data. Now, the first thing, or the most important thing that you need to know is that security is priority. Now, how do you ensure security in your computer, security of your data? First of all, a user must log on to the system. That is the first thing that you have to have in order to make sure that you are secured. So logging in, it means you have to have a username and a password. Now, a user must have a username and a password to gain access. Now, this password and this username will allow you to gain access. Depending on the type of computer, if you are connected to a network, then the username and the password would differ. So it's very important to remember that for security purposes, you need to have a username as well as a password. Now, your password. You cannot just have a password that is just a password. You need to make sure that your password is secure enough so that no one else will be able to crack your password without your permission. Now, a few things that we can focus on when you set up a password. A no-no is do not use your name or use cell phone numbers because they are easy. Anyone can be able to remember that. And you must remember that your password must change regularly, all right? So once you are able to find this password that is not a name, that is not a cell phone number, you must be able to change that password regularly so that even if it gets misplaced or it gets to be seen by someone who's not supposed to see it, at least you, you know that you would have changed it. Now, for you to have that good password, now what is it that you must do? Make sure on your password you have a combination. Combination of what? Text, characters, numbers, and some letters. Now, your letters, you can make them capital letters, small letters, just a mixture so that your uh, password is a bit difficult to remember or a bit difficult for someone else to remember. Obviously, you have to remember it, but someone else has to, you know, be able to um, find it more difficult to remember. Okay, so that's for security reasons. 
if you don't have a good password, it's the same as if you don't have security in your system. Now, let's look at your other software. Now, this software is actually in terms of a standalone or an integrated software. It can either be your system software or it can either be your application software. A more good uh, example of that would be your different types of application software where they, ca they actually uh, come as a package or others as a standalone. So let's just explain what I mean here. Your standalone software, it's software that don't come bundled with other software. It means that this software will get it on its own and it doesn't come with other software in a bundle. And they can be able to be ran separately on your system. Second uh, explanation of integrated software, our integrated software is a collection of individual software. Now it means you're going to take this individual software and bundle it together and sell it as a unit. So standalone, single, integrated, bundled software which is sold together as a unit. Now most of the time when you get integrated software they are more convenient and they more of them would have a common feature. For example you would have um, your Microsoft Office where you get uh, Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint. So that's a package of integrated software that comes together as a bundle and you get different applications but in one. So that's how we can differentiate between standalone and integrated. Right, now let's look at your different software. We did touch a bit on the two types of software where we get application and system software. But now in terms of these applications and system software, they come in different um, uh, types of software. For example, whether you buy it or whether you get it for free or whether you can share it or whether you can distribute it to other people. Now, there's um, a few that we're going to look at. The first one is our freeware. So freeware is software that is copyrighted and it's offered for free by the owner at no cost. So this is the software that most people would actually be able to get for free from the internet and they don't have to pay anything to use that software. An example would be if you have Opera Mini on your phone, you got Opera Mini by downloading for free, but the only difference at disadvantage in that, you cannot make changes. So once the software has been developed and it's, it has uh, uh, problems or there's mistakes there, you will have to use it as it is because there isn't really a maintenance of the software because it's free and it came at, um, at no cost. Right, then the second one that we're going to look at is Shareware. Now, Shareware, think of the word share, says copyrighted software distributed for a free trial period. It means that this software is shared but you can only use it for a limited time period. Meaning they're giving you the experience of the software. Check if you like using the software. Then if you do, then you have to buy the software. So that is why we say it's distributed for free, but for a, a limited um, period of time. So this software, it's free to use, but after a specific number of days, the software will expire, and then you'll have to use um, uh, another software or you'd have to actually buy the software in order to get full um, usage of that software. Right, another type of software we have proprietary software. Now proprietary software would be your software it's owned by an individual or a company and you as a user you'd actually buy and you get a license 
to use the software now most of these softwares normal ones that we use for example like your microsoft office so now when you buy microsoft office you don't actually buy the right to own the software but you're actually buying the right to use the software you don't own but you have the right to use it now you don't own the software for you to be able to give it to your friends make copies and you know do whatever you like with the software but you only bought the software so that you can get the rights to use the software and that is why everyone who buys software needs to have their own product key and then you have your open source software. Now open source software, take note of open source. Now it's software where the code, right? The source code is available for use. Now what do we mean when we say available? It means that when you get the software, you are able to actually modify the software you are actually able to do what? Redistribute the software. Now, those are the actual rights that you have, but you don't have the advantage where you get support as a user because there isn't really um, enough support to, to be given. Because remember, this software is open software where other users have the right to make changes to the software and that is why we call it an open source meaning you take the software you modify it you make it better or you change whatever that you did not like and then you use it for your own good if it serves um, a better purpose than it served before but you cannot really go back to the owner or the writer of the software or the designer and actually um, ask for for support because the software would have been changed by other users and then one example is your LibreOffice, where you are able to get the software for free and our uh, users are able to actually modify and redistribute the software right then once you understand all of these types of software there's somewhere where I've mentioned licensing for example, when you buy your Microsoft Office, you get a license. Now, why do we need licensing? It's very important because remember, the owner of the software is not selling you the software, but it's actually selling you the right to use the software. So there needs to be um, some form of agreement that has to happen between the user and the owner. Right, so when you look at licensing agreements, we're talking about contracts between your manufacturer, which is the owner, as well as the user. So this agreement here, which we as users has to or have to always abide by, is actually giving us only the right to use which is very important because most of the people, you get software, you buy it, and you feel that you own it and you can distribute it anyhow. You can make an, any number of copies without really understanding what rights you have with that software. So we have the right to use. Now, we've got two different um, types that we're going to discuss. We have an end user agreement and we have a site license agreement. Now, if I'm buying software as a single user and I only want to use the software in my house, which is my computer and my laptop, the best license for me would be this end user license. Right, if I'm working at a company of about uh, 40 users or maybe at school where I have learners between 20 to 100 learners, then we would need to have a multiple user license agreement. Now, why are we saying we need this multiple user? Now, this multiple user will allow us to install this one software into different computers. Now, that is why we call it a site, because a site would consist of more than one computer where you are actually having more than one user where you will be able to eventually install the software to all these different computers for the users. And the last type of licensing 
would be your Creative Commons license. Now this software, the owner will distribute the software to the public with some of the rights of the software and the owner will still retain other rights of the software. Now let's think of this as an example where you browse on your internet and then you use some pictures for your assignment. Now not all these pictures have or are actually given to you for free because some of these uh, pictures belong to certain companies or certain um, owners. Now when you get a Creative Commons picture. Now you know that you have the right to use this picture, but you don't have the right to say that now this picture is yours and you own it. So whenever you use this picture, you have to always at least mention that it was taken from Creative Commons or from whoever posted on Creative Commons so that you can credit the, uh, the owner with their rights that they still have. And that is why we say you don't have the full rights, but you have some rights of using the software. All right, and that is it for today's lesson. We'll see you next time. Thank you.